Hi Flossed friends, it's Sherry, the Colorado Cross Stitcher, and I am here to talk to you about my personal cross stitching projects that I've worked on for the past month, and also a little bit of shop news at the end. So, thank you so much for joining me. If you're new, welcome. I'm glad you found my channel, and if you're returning, it's nice to see you back again. I look forward to talking to you in the comments below. That's one of my favorite parts of floss tubing is talking to you guys in the comments. So, all right, I have a whole table full of stuff to share with you today. So I have finishes, I have a new start, one new start, I think. Um, I have a giveaway, I have freebies, I have new patterns that I've published. So let's just jump right in. All right, first of all, my book of days. So 2022 book of days, which can you believe we're on the last month and I'm so happy that I've actually filled this out the whole year. That's a first for me. But now that I kind of have my groove with the um, calendars, I feel like I'll make good use of them from now on. So here's my November. You can see I had a lot of starts because I had to go along the side and along the bottom with some of my starts. So I did a lot of stitching in the month of November. And December, ready to go. And then, of course, the new Book of Days 2023, which I've already started to not fill out, but put some like on my back pages. You know how I added the um, clear covers front and back, the spiral binding, and then cardstock pages in the back. So I've got finishes ready to go. And I kind of learned this year how many pages I need for finishes. This is my page for fun, so I'm looking forward to some retreats and getaways. And I have a page for stash, because I like to keep track of what I buy. So, and then, I don't know if you remember, if you watched my floss tube when I talked about um, the Reflet de Soie Summer Box Kit. And in that kit were some colored graphs, like this. Just pages, I, I don't know what she said to use those for, but they were just a little heavier weight. And I said, well, I'm gonna get those and use those in my book of days next year. So I added, I think five or six pages of that. And I'm gonna keep track of my, just um, probably I'm gonna put my whips on one of those because I wanna kind of have a list of my whips, which I'm thinking I might go through my whips maybe on the next floss tube video, which I've never done a whip parade before, but. All of a sudden I have three big containers of project bags with whips so I kind of want to keep a better handle on that so I did add those pages in now one thing I wanted to tell you about your calendars if you do get them spiral bound and you end up um, wanting to add more pages you can always unwind this spiral binding and go the next size up and that's what I had to do on this one um, because I added those extra Reflet de Soie pages in there too. So just know that in the middle of the year, if you find yourself getting full in your calendar, you can always spiral bind up. All right, so my new start was Stacy Nash's Turkey Hollow Farm, which I have wanted to do forever. I love the big yellow barn. I like the sign above. I love the turkeys. And I like that the borders are different. They're kind of interesting. It's not the same border all the way around. And I've probably had this in my stash for two or three years. I don't, I'm not sure when she came out with it, but I feel like since she came out with it. So I started that Thanksgiving, maybe Thanksgiving week. And here's my progress on that. Now the farmer in the pattern is holding a shotgun. Well, I didn't really want to have a shotgun. And I've seen several people do it with rakes. And so I could have done a rake, but I decided to do a broom. Because if I was going to go out and shoe turkeys, I would not want to shoo them away with a rake. I'd be afraid I'd, you know, poke them. And I'd probably take a broom out and go swatting around with the broom. We do have wild turkeys in our yard. I've shared pictures of them before on my floss tube. They're amazing. So I like turkeys, so I, I put up a broom. So the, the farmer's holding a broom. Now there's not much else you'd use a broom for outside the barn, I don't think, but if you're gonna go out and shoot turkeys, you can take your broom. So all I have left are the borders. I'm not sure if I'll go back to this um, 
and finish it out or if I'll just wait till next year. I don't know, I'm close. I might just go ahead and finish it out. So that is one of the things that I worked on. And then from last time, you remember this big old tomato. And this is from Tomato Tavern, Lucy Beam. I love this big tomato. I'm a tomato fan anyway. And so I sent you guys, well, I don't know if I'm gonna put this Tomato Tavern sign kind of below here, like have it hanging or how I wanna do that. And it's ironic to me that my last video was called Thinking Outside the Box and it took, I don't know, probably a dozen of you to say, hey, you should do it around the bottom of the little thing that you have it on, which I don't know why that didn't occur to me. So that's what I did. I just charted it because um, it was, the words were too big. The lettering was too big on here, even though I love that lettering. Um, so I just put Tomato Tavern and then I did a long row of tomatoes and a little border and then the nun stitch so that I could fray down to the nun stitch. And then I just tacked it in the back. So again, this was just a um, funny piece that I found at um, the antique store, which was exactly what I had in mind for how I wanted to do this little um, pedestal stand kind of thing for this big turkey, or turkey, tomato, for the big tomato. Um, so I love how that's finished off now. Speaking of tomatoes, that was another thing that I finished this time. Oh, this is my, maybe one of my favorite things, and I think it took, I'm going to say an evening. It might have taken me two evenings. I really can't remember, but I love this tomato row by October House. Isn't that the cutest? Each tomato is different. I love the little running stitch. And it's not a running stitch, it's actually cross stitches, but it looks like a running stitch down at the bottom. And here's the one I did. Super fun to work on, like I said, really quick. It would make such a cute gift and a quick stitch to gift for any one of your quilting friends who use probably tomatoes for their pin cushions. And um, I didn't change any colors. I used our, I think it was our cherry colored chenille around the edges, just put a green on the back. And again, I glue my chenille on so that it stays fluffy all the way around. I don't want to have little stitch marks. And I use that Aliens Tacky Glue because it dries clear and you can't even tell that it's glued. I don't know how close I can get, but you cannot tell that it's glued on since it dries clear. So, it was so fun to work on. Then, also last time, I don't have any antique finds to show you this time, but I will for the next time. Um, I, I only show you antique finds that I can use in my finishing. And remember I got this little chest of drawers that I said I had a plan for? Well, I wanted to put a row of tomatoes on the top where it was missing the shelf. And then look, this fits perfectly up on top there. And then I've got, this is another great book if you like um, tomatoes, is Keeper of the Pins by With Thy Needle and Thread. So I brought a couple of those home from the shop so I could show you how I kind of envision just kind of opening the doors a little. I don't know, I haven't really played with this. And putting a couple of pillows in there, probably my little stand next to it, and isn't that fun? So you never know what you're going to find if you go to the antique store or if you have friends or parents who have attics full of old old things like this. Um, it's really fun to repurpose some of these things for displays. So that is my tomato row and my cute little tomato chest. And I glued these tomatoes in which is why they're staying so perfectly in there for me. All right. Next, I did this. Now, I meant to um, email Teresa Kogut 
because this is her pattern and it was a free pattern I think that she shared with um, her shops a couple of markets ago before I even had a shop and since this is my word of the year I so wanted to stitch this up so this is her create every day um, not really a logo but it's her her saying and she's got stickers in her shop on Etsy if you Google Teresa Kogut Etsy shop um, you can get stickers you can get t-shirts with this on it but I really wanted to stitch this and I love how it turned out and I meant to email her before this um, video to ask if it was going to be in a book someday or uh, any way for everybody to get this if you want to stitch it so I will still do that and I'll follow up in my next floss tube on that but love how this turned out most of my pillows I use the um, crushed walnut inside because I like how heavy it is I have a few finishes today too that I used um, just fiber fill stuffing but I love that okay let's see what else do I have to share with you one of my new um, favorite books is Simone's Smalls and I think I showed you this last time I definitely need to get it spiral bound because I've made three things out of it and I have plans for another one so I'm definitely going to be using it a lot and let me show you the back you can see some of the projects on the back too and I I love doing specific smalls in dough bowls like for the different holidays or the different seasons but I also love having some options you know because there's some months where there's not really um, you know a season or a particular holiday going on that you just want to fill your little bowl or your big bowl with just generic things but that are still pretty and this is the kind of thing I think of when I think of that because these are multi-seasonal um, you can do them any month and you can do them in any color which I love that you can swap out your colors and it's just full of fun things so the first thing I did and this is the one that appealed to me the most initially um, was the little house on the front isn't that so cute and I used I did it on 36 count I think I did it on winter moon and I used sulky threads which I am such a fan of sulky threads on 36 count and otherwise I didn't change anything I still did it in the red and blue but just a little different one and then you do the edging I got some fiber fill here I did stuff this one with fiber fill um, so I did the edging and in the book it looks like they have you do the edging in four pieces since I had done those block party designs from hands-on design I knew you could just do one long strip um, you know unless you're trying to conserve fabric and you don't have a piece that long but I found it easy to do that because I knew the corners were going to go together really easily as I was sewing them along so again you do a running stitch to outline the top piece and then you do a running stitch top and bottom on your sides and then when you're ready to put them together you hold those two edges together and you just whip stitch through the running stitches and then afterwards of course I thought wouldn't it have been fun to put all the addresses of the places you've lived in your life on the back I didn't think of that in time kind of like how on the meow block party I did all of our, the cats that we've had in our life I think it would have been fun to do that on the back now her design on the back she has you do a complete design on the back or that's how the pattern is shown let's see if there's a picture of the back no so I didn't want to do a whole design just to have it always sitting like this because I knew I probably would never turn it and display it like that when the front house is so cute so I did that design on a separate piece and made it into a separate pillow but then I thought well I want to change the colors and make it into more of a Christmas piece so this is the what I did so that is technically what um, is shown on the back of this house and of course in the pattern she did it in reds and blues and then I just decided to do reds and greens 
And then I finished it off with a little narrow border of Baker's Twine, which is one of my favorites. So this would be super fun to do in different colors. Um, you could do autumn colors, you could do pastel colors for the Easter holidays or for spring. And of course the Christmas colors look so pretty in here too. So anyway, that's an idea. And all of these in the book are easy to swap out into threads you already have. So, and then the next one I did, and I have to put my glasses on because I have to read you this little verse. Now this was the needle roll, this needle roll right here. And I didn't want to make a needle roll and I really liked the verse on this and I wanted it to be on a pillow to show instead of rolled up in a needle roll, or maybe it rolls to the back, I'm not sure. So I made it into a little pillow. And I, and I'll read that to you in a second, I lined it with the black and white baker's twine. So a lot of backstitching on that one, but I don't mind backstitching. So it says, the secret of beautiful things is not hidden in needle or thread, nor in the buttons, nor in the size, not in wood, cashmere, or cotton, but in the people who silently create with heart and soul. Love that, love that for all the makers out there. So again, that was a part of the needle roll that I'm not doing. And now I'll put it in a little double. So that was fun. I had a lot of fun doing that. Now I am going to do another one while I'm doing several more in this little book, but um, I want to show you the next one I'm doing. Okay, this, this set is a project bag, not a bag, project folder from Debbie's underscore stitching. I will link to her below. She makes the most incredible, incredible bags. And you really have to just be there at the right time when she puts them up. Um, she used to take pre-orders, which is how I got this one. She does not take pre-orders anymore, so now it's left with the draw. But I love this book, little project folder. It's got space underneath. It's got zippered pockets here on top. And then she put in a sure if I have it in here. I think I have it in my other um, project bag. She put in a little um, thread keep and then this adorable little accessory pouch. Oh, I love this so much. When I was um, first starting to cross stitch in the 80s, I guess it was in the 80s, right? Yeah, in the 80s. Um, my local shop was Jean's Corner and it was in Arnold, Missouri, and Jean had a thing where you had a little punch card and you could get punches for however much you spent. And when you filled them up, you got $25 off of whatever you wanted. I think the punch card was like $250. So it took me forever to fill that up because we were newly married, we were young, we didn't have a lot of money. And when I filled it up, I bought a project folder with it almost exactly like this. Well, no, not as nice as this. But I was so excited to use that project folder. So this is kind of full circle how it's fun to have this to um, use. And then this is the little um, accessories folder. So it's got a zippered pocket and again space behind. It's got room for your scissors and I have um, my little portable seam ripper in there. And then this is magnetized for needles. So Oh, I love this set so much. So if you're in the market for it, you might follow her and keep an eye on her Instagram. And then one of my friends at Stitch Night got a folder and she told me one of the keys is to allow alerts from Instagram. And you can say who you want to know as soon as they post, you want to get an alert that they posted. And that's how she was able to get one of these. So there's a tip for you. But I wanted to show you this because the next thing I'm going to make out of Simone Smalls is the drum right here at the top. And she did it all in reds. It's interesting because I think she did it on 32 count in inside the book. 
and she did two strands for some of it and one strand for some of it. So it adds a little bit of dimension and a little bit of um, difference in there, which I thought was kind of cool. So, but I decided to do it, here's a better picture of it. I decided to do it in three colors because it's got stems and leaves, it's got little berries, it's got the alphabet. So here is my tip. One of the ways to make your finished products, projects, look really almost customized is to pick your finishing materials and then pick your threads based on those finishing materials. So like for example, in this, I um, picked our, uh, I think it's patriotic chenille and I knew that I wanted that to match the thread color really well so then I took that chenille over to the sulky cabinet and picked out a sulky thread that matched that. So now it looks like it's perfectly matched together when really I just picked the trim I wanted to use and then I picked my thread to match the trim. So for this I picked the fabric that I want to go on the top and the bottom of the drum. So see here she used a really pretty red with some um, brown. I know this is a large print for that, but I thought, you know, if I could um, kind of center one of these roses on the top of that drum and on the bottom, I think that would look pretty. And then I pulled some possible sulky threads to go with it that match. How am I going to hold that up? There you go. So I have to decide on these two yellows. I think, I mean, the bright yellow probably looks better with it, but the golden tone looks a little more subtle. So I haven't decided yet which one I want, I want to use, but that's going to look like it's perfectly matched when I get done with it. So think about that when you're doing your finishing, either on your trims or your fabrics pull those out ahead of time and kind of look at your threads and see what goes really well with it and that's a fun way to do your finishing. So I'm going to start on that hopefully before next time. Maybe I'll get it finished. It's, you know, all of the projects in <clears throat> this particular book are small so they go pretty quickly and that's why I think I'll get it spiral bound because I think I can envision making gifts for people out of this. Just little ones that I think people will enjoy. You know what else came with this was, and I wish I had it, um, it's about this size and it's a double row of clear plastic with zips and it's where I keep all of my sulky threads. It's perfect. So I'll just show you that the next time. Okay, let's see. What else do we have? Well, I have, um, I have things to show you from last year's advent calendar um, because the patterns are now ready to put up for sale. We keep those exclusive to the advent calendar for a year and then we put them up. So I'm going to show you that and then I'm going to show you the freebies that I um, did for you this time. So advent. First of all is this pattern. Stitching makes me happy. Which it does so I keep this up in my stitching room a very simple little thing and also a fun gift for um, all of your stitching friends it would also look cute in a pillow I think I did this on now I can't remember oh I'll look in the thing I think I put it in here just to kind of give you an idea of the size I did it on 32 count two over two. So, you know, you could easily do that on 36 or 40 count and make a cute little pillow. I mean, it would be a good pillow size for that too, as well on the 32. So that one is now available. And then I just got this frame at Hobby Lobby, I think, or Michael's, just a square, probably a six by six frame. So that was the easy finish. And then the next one is A Quiet Serenity, and I did this on 32 count charcoal. I love that saying. And I'm always looking for um, projects or um, finished pillows or 
framed things that I could put out in the wintertime. Because, you know, once you take down all the stuff from Christmas, the house looks a little bit, a little bit sad. So here's the one I did for that. And so I used kind of Quaker, half Quaker motifs, but I did, you know, the stand of Christmas trees or uh, winter evergreens on the bottom and the house on the top with a little bit of smoke coming out and then snowflake, kind of snowflake corners. Again, it would be cute as a pillow. This is one of those stands that you can get at Hobby Lobby. They come out with um, different colors for the different seasons and I always put a couple in my cart when I'm there because it's so easy to finish. It says something underneath. I don't know. I, I don't even remember what it said. Home Sweet Home or something underneath. So I just cut a mat board, or my husband cuts it for me, and then finish this off in the mat board. And then on the, around the edging, I put a black and white ribbon. So it's super easy to finish. A lot less expensive than framing. And um, then you can stand it up anywhere and then it folds flat of course to store until next winter so winter of quiet serenity and then the last one is uh, joy my wish for you which again can be finished into a pillow or an ornament i did mine in a little pillow and with a polka dot background and here is that. So you can see a little bit of checkerboard texturing in the house and in the grass below. And then the little jingle bell with the joy on it. Of course, a little cardinal in the top of the tree. Smoke coming out of the chimney. So that one is joy my wish for you. Love it. And baker's twine around the edge for a simple edging. And a lot of times when I a lot of times when I design, I will do a border on the particular pattern. And I feel like if you've got a border like this, you don't really have to put trim on it because that kind of sets off the design in the middle. Um, but then when I held up the baker's twine to this, I thought, yeah, that's just the little extra I want to put in there. But you don't have to put trim on your pillows. A lot of times it's just it looks just fine without and I think this is one of those that would have looked just fine without the trim. I guess I'm just in a trim trim mode. All right, so those are new patterns that are available now and then I did some freebies, so I want to share those with you. And All right, so the first one and I did um, put this in the newsletter a couple days ago earlier this week. And that is Oh What Fun. Now, Oh What Fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Remember that? I saw this, I saw a sign on a piece of enamel um, that said Oh What Fun this season. And I thought, oh, I need that sign. I thought, I don't need that sign. I can, you know, stitch that up quick as a blink. And it was just the red words. It didn't have a border. It didn't have anything else. Just the red words. But I thought, that's that's fun and it's a good reminder during the holidays to have fun and to enjoy the moment and enjoy the season and not get all caught up in you know all the Christmas cards I need to send out which I don't do anymore and all the baking I need to do which I don't do a lot of that anymore but you know sometimes we can get so caught up in the busyness of the season and I think this is a fun little reminder to just enjoy it too and um, focus on the reason for the season. So I did this, it has a little holly border and I envision it, you know, it'd be cute to hang on a tree. You could put a um, little hang, hang thing there and like that tree back there, just tuck it in there. Um, it's also cute as a little pillow. This was done on 36 count, so you could easily do it on a bigger count and make a bigger pillow out of it. But I just thought it was a fun little, little doodle to do up. And then I thought, well, I'm going to show it on a bigger piece of fabric, so let me stitch it again. Remember last time in my floss tube I talked about um, stitching over two or over three or over four and taking the same design and just making it bigger just based on your fabric and your floss. And so I stitched the Oh What Fun part and then I thought, 
you know what else is fun? Birthdays are fun and anniversaries are fun and all kinds of celebrations are fun. So maybe instead of just a bigger Christmas one, let's make a birthday celebration or an anniversary celebration or a anytime you want to celebrate, oh, what fun. So in this one, I did confetti and, you know, different like uh, a confetti explosion around the background. And I called this the celebration, oh, what fun. And this would be fun to pop on, a, you know, the dinner table and the centerpiece for a birthday or um, at the front of the house where people walk in if you're having a party or, you know, those kinds of things. I did just a simple confetti border around the edges. This is done on 28 count fabric over two and it's a one of those fabrics I got probably in the 80s or 90s from Jean's Corner, my little local shop, and it wasn't labeled. So I don't know what it, she labeled it very well. I had already used some of it and took it out of the original package. So it wasn't labeled due to my own problem, my own fault. But um, so I don't know what it is. It's got the slightest tint of green. And because I was thinking that I was redoing this as just a bigger Christmas pillow, I thought that was perfect. Now I probably would just do it on white so the confetti pops stand out even a little bit more. So these are two separate downloads on our website just because some people will only want the Christmas and some people might only want this one. So um, if you want them both, make sure you download both of those. And then I was thinking, oh, what fun. I've already done that and I had just watched Brenda and the Serial Starter and Laura, the Serial Starter, was talking about how her grandmother used to have the phrase, oh, say. And I thought, well, I've already got the O oh part. I might as well make it a little O oh, say in honor of Laura's grandmother. And I look at this as, you know, that could mean two things. It could mean like somebody has just given you a crocheted doll toilet paper holder cover and you don't know what to say about it and you open that gift and you say oh say i haven't gotten one of those before because what do you say you don't really want a crocheted toilet paper holder do you remember those it used to be it looked like a doll on the top and the the cover to the toilet paper was like ruffles her skirt ruffles i don't know whose idea that was but I'm sure the way grandma, uh, Laura's grandma meant it was, oh, say, that is clever, or that's really cool, or that's wonderful. And that's the other version. So I did, oh, say, in honor of Laura's grandma. And I did it in vintage colors because Laura's grandma. So I put vintage backing on it. And here's, oh, say, just for fun. I did little, um, a daisy, little daisy border around the edge. Again, vintage, vintage colors. Of course, you can do it in any colors, but how I envision using this is anytime I want people to like notice, I'm gonna put together a bowl full of tomatoes and aren't these cool and I want you to notice it. I might pop oh say in there so that people walk up and they go, oh say, and then I can say, I know, aren't they really cute? So it's kind of like an exclamation point, like, look here, isn't this fun? Oh, say. So that's another little freebie I put up on the uh, website. I sent it to Laura a little earlier, a couple weeks ago when I first did it. And uh, she said her mom might want to do it too because it was her mom's mother-in-law that used to say that. And I think that's a fun saying. So, all right, so those are the freebies that are up on the website. All right, let's talk about three things. So three things for today. One is an Instagram account that I want to tell you about. One is something for the holidays and one is about habits. So first, let's talk about the for the holidays. So I just found these at Walmart, the Walmart grocery store. It's great value. And these are hot cocoa toppers. But what drew me to them is look at the cute, Look at the cute mug on the top. So I thought, you know, I probably will take that top when this is empty and just tuck it into my shelves there because it's a cute little cup of hot cocoa with marshmallows on top. They had all different versions of this. Some of them were just sprinkles for cookie baking, 
but I got the hot cocoa, peppermint, and the salted caramel. Aren't they cute? You can see we've already been using them. So we um, have a hot cocoa bar, usually up with the coffee bar in the kitchen. And so I just tuck these out. And then when you make the hot cocoa, of course you put the whipped cream on top. You can put your marshmallows underneath if you want marshmallows. Whipped cream on top and then sprinkle this on the top and it just looks so cute. In fact, I'm going to insert a picture here of something I shared on Instagram with that right here. So it just is kind of a fun way to make it look and taste better. I felt like I was a professional hot cocoa barista when I was making these for the family over Thanksgiving and then sprinkling these fun things on top. So I'm going to have to go get more because we've got my mom and brother coming for the holidays and we're definitely going to have hot cocoa going on. Also, I hope that you subscribe to my um, email newsletter, which is you can subscribe on our coloradocrossstitcher.com website. I did send out my favorite hot cocoa recipe in this last one that I sent this past week. So hopefully you got that. If you didn't, just shoot me an email and I can send it to you. But it's a crock pot hot cocoa recipe, which I may have shared with you all before last year or a couple years ago. Um, it is the best tasting. And when you see what goes into it, you'll know why it's so it tastes so good. But it's really if you're going to have a group of people over and you want a lot of hot cocoa or if you're going to stitch all day and you want hot cocoa available to yourself all the day, all day. But I made it for when I owned the yarn shop, I made it for a knitting group one time and the next year everybody is saying, "And are you going to bring the cocoa, the hot cocoa in the crock pot cuz that was the best." So it's really delicious and then you get these and you got a little cocoa bar. So that's number one. Number two, okay, this is a new, I'm always finding new people on Instagram, interesting people. So, and again, I don't show you a clip of what their account looks like because it's all, you know, copyrighted. I wouldn't do that, but please look up and I will link below Ethel the Glamour Tort, T-O-R-T, -T, Ethel the Glamour Tort. It's all one word. It, she's a tortoise. And this family just takes her everywhere. It is It cracks me up. They had her walking through a corn maze. They show her taking a bath. And when she takes a bath, they put little rose petals in and light a candle. And she's just kind of, you know, having a spa time. She has a little cave, a little wooden box built, I think, under their bed where she sleeps. And so she crawls in there and the gal who owns her just decorated it for Christmas for her. And oh my gosh, she's so funny and she moves so fast. Like she could be in the living room and if she hears that water running in the bathroom and knows she's gonna get a bath, she comes tooling around the corner. And I think they said she weighs about 50 pounds. So they just pick her up and put her in the back of the car and take her where they wanna go. And she just looks happy as can be. Now I know they live to be 100 or more years old. so. I don't know how that works, owning a tortoise, but um, it's just cracking me up. Ethel the Glamour Tort. So look her up. I hope you enjoy her. All right, and then the third thing, and I don't know, did I talk about Atomic Habits before? Because this is the best book. I listened to it on tape, um, audiobooks, when I was driving down to New Mexico last spring to, see, to, to visit our son. And then I bought the book because I liked it so much. Um, I don't know, it just really resonated with me. But one thing that has come out of this is I got this idea um, in September when it was Paul's birthday that we should walk every day between his birthday and my birthday, which is in February. Because I'm the kind of person, like if I say I'm gonna walk three days a week and Monday morning rolls around or Monday night, whatever, and I think, oh, I don't feel like walking today. Okay, I'm gonna do, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and then Tuesday comes and I think, I don't really feel like walking today either. Okay, I'm gonna walk Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then I'll have the weekend off, and then I'll start in Monday, Wednesday, Friday next week. And you know how that goes. Wednesday comes, still don't feel like going out in the cold or the hot or whatever. So I'll walk Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then, you know, before I know it, I'm thinking, okay, I'm walking every day this weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that'll be my three days. 
and it just never gets done. So I, one of the things he talks about in here is setting yourself up for, um, you know, effectively using habits in a positive way in your life. And one of the things is um, don't give yourself an out. So just, it's a part of your routine, it's non-negotiable. Don't get up and say, do I wanna exercise today? Do I wanna go for a walk? Um, just get up and you say, okay, today I'm gonna walk at whatever time. And so I thought, well, this would be good practice for Paul and I, because we do like to walk. It's just, you know, working full time and whatever, cold, hot, all of the reasons. And so we decided to do that. We're gonna have, we're gonna walk every day. We're not gonna even make it an option. It just is, it is one thing we do. You brush your teeth, you sleep, you walk, you know, it's just one of those things. And so we're on day, I don't know, 80 or 85 in a row of walking every day and it's been so good. And there've been times where like we've just been super busy at the shop and we've basically walked all day pulling orders and worked into the night having to, you know, ship orders. And then we get home at nine o'clock and we think, oh man. And on a negotiable days, if I was doing negotiable exercising, I would have said, yeah, we walked enough today. Don't you think? I think we'll count it good. But we decided not to do that. Even on the days when we work long hours and we walk a lot, we're still out there walking. And we do have a shorter version. So basically we think, you know what? I mean, we can at least do the short version today. That's at least doable. And so I don't know, we've managed to keep it up. The other night we went walking and our son was visiting for the weekend and we all went out walking at, I think it was 9.30 at night. It was like seven degrees and, oh, that would have been an easy day to just say, yeah, no, not gonna do that. When we moved here, I bought this down coat that goes like below my knees. I think it was Land's End or L.L. Bean or something because it was so cold that first December and I thought, oh my gosh, I didn't realize it was this cold in the winter in Colorado. We've been multiple winters to Colorado before we moved here, always in March, and it never seemed that cold. So I bought this coat thinking, well, I'm gonna have to wear this all season long. That was 12 years ago. And then I went for years and never wore it because it isn't that cold here. Our coldest time is December, early December. And then by the time you get to January, February, March, I mean, most of the time I wear just a vest or sometimes I don't even wear a coat because the sun is so hot here. Um, and we're at 5,000 feet elevation that even when we do get snow, it melts off in a couple of days. So it's just a mild, it's a very mild winter actually. We get a lot of snow. Our snowiest months are March and April, uh, believe it or not. When you guys are all starting to enjoy the spring, we're getting dumped on with snow and, uh, but again, it doesn't stay very long. So I'm super glad to have this coat to walk in on days like this. So um, that's just one of the things that we've put into practice with the atomic habits and I think it's gonna be good. And I told Paul, you know what? Let's walk every day between your birthday and my birthday. And if we don't like it, we can just say, yeah, we tried that for a few months and we're just not gonna worry about it. But I, I'm sure we'll keep it up because we, really enjoy it and it's going really well. So that is number three, Atomic Habits. I'll link to that one below too. All right, now let's talk about, let's see, I gotta look at my list. All right, next time what I wanna work on. Well, and then I have a, my pattern to show you too. Next time, okay, I'm so excited. My virtual friend, Kathy, contacted me on Instagram she has my unicorn chart that I've wanted forever. All right, birds of a feather, a joyous Christmas. And she said, I'm gonna stitch it up and then I'll be happy to lend it to you. I'm so happy to have this, so I am gonna stitch it quick so I can get this right back to where it makes me nervous to have somebody else's pattern, especially a pattern that is valuable like this one. So I'm gonna stitch it up quick and I'm gonna get it right back to her, but I'm just so happy that I get to stitch it. And it, you might remember me showing you my needle point. I bought a needle point canvas of it. And so I'm gonna turn that into a pillow, but this one I'm gonna frame and I'm just, they're a little different actually. The inside is the same, but the needle point doesn't have the words and the border on it. So 
really looking forward. I did start it. I did Baby Jesus, but not enough of a start to show you yet. But I'm really excited to be working on this. And then this is another one that I want to do because it's um, Christmas colors. I thought that would be a good start for this month, too. Pineberry Lane, Winif Winifred Glark. And it's just a little, let's see, what is the stitch count on this? Does it say? It doesn't say on the back anyway. So I pulled um, three MPI silks, because it's basically red, green, dark green, and light green. So I pulled these and I'm doing it on 32 count dirty linen. 32 count. I wonder why I decided on that. I kitted this up a while ago, probably to make it a little bit bigger. So that's going to be a fun one to start for the holidays. And then I'm going to work on that Simone's Smalls. So I'm looking forward to that too. Okay, now I'm excited to show you my next um, pattern. So I have all kinds of ideas for patterns. I have a lot of them designed, just not stitched yet. Um, I go back and forth on model stitchers because I invariably change things when I stitch them and then go back and make the changes on the chart. Um, but I, I probably should use model stitchers at some point. Anyway, I stitched this, designed it last winter, stitched it last spring, and just am now getting it out to you because I wanted to stitch little pillows to show you just how it can be fun to do either way and I just didn't get to the little pillows. So this is my new design called Snowman Collector and of course I love it because I did it but you all know that I have a lot of snowmen that I put up every year and the fun thing was this year our son did it for me because I was doing the rest of the house and uh, anyway so I Got a lot of inspiration from my snowmen, but I wanted a piece to talk about snowman collecting. So let me just point out a few things. So we've got this little guy who has noses for sale. He's got a basket full of carrots. And then we have flaky friends, forecast snow. We have the skating skating snowman we have the snowman holding the heart we have the snowman with the cardinal and another bird singing to this snowman we have the sledding snowman the lineup so it was super fun to design and really fun to stitch and i'm really happy with the way it turned out i stitched this on 36 count pearl gray and I stitch on 36 count two over two. So you can, I know a lot of people stitch one over two on 36 count, which would totally work as well. So if you are a snowman collector or you know a snowman collector, um, this is a fun one to do. And then, because dough bowls, thought it would be fun to, you could take any one of those different snowman and stitch them up into pillows including the snowman collector now all i did on snowman collector was add one more snowman in the row so otherwise i just left it the same but these are fun to do up in small and i did these on uh 25 count lugana stormy night i think i have it in the pattern uh, what I did, and I stitched three strands over two on that. So it's basically like 12 and a half count so that you can make these small little guys a whole lot bigger. So I made the tall guy with the Christmas tree on top of his head. I put snowman fabric on the back. And... I love this one because, you know, polka dots. I'm always going to be loving the polka dots. And I love his long hat tassel. And then this guy juggling the stars. And 
and the little heart holding one. Now this one, wouldn't this be a cute quick stitch for a friend? Just a little tuck in, a little pillow tuck in for a gift. And basically this is the perfect wooden bowl except for the corners of Snowman Collector. These are stuffed with uh, lizard litter, crushed walnut shells. And this one, of course, I want to put in my snowman display. Now I'm going to put a picture here. So that is my snowman collection that goes up every year and it stays up through the end of February. And that's the thing about these snowmen is you can use them for the holidays. But in my mind, they're one of those things that you can put out for your winter decorating. So you can put them out for January, February again, when your house looks a little forlorn, not so many things up. You can put up all of your little snowman guys. All right. And of course, you can do your own thing and make a lineup, a, you know, a one piece lineup of however many you want. And so they're just super fun. I have another companion piece to Snowman Collector, which I'm going to work on this weekend. I mean, it's designed. I'm going to work on stitching it. And uh, it's not snowman, but I'll let you know when that one's ready. So that is ready now, and I hope you love it. I sure had fun doing it, and I'm going to have fun hanging this in my house someday because I am a snowman collector. So, all right. What else do I have to show you today? I want to talk about... The project bag winner from last time and this is um, Deborah from Joyful Stitching Store on Etsy all one word I always link to it in my notes is so wonderful about donating bags for my floss tube and she um, sent me this one for the Thanksgiving project bag the last time and I had you use the word thankful I have so much fun reading your comments and um, I kept a list so I keep a list of things I want to refer to in the next floss tube or people's comments I want to tell you guys about and I don't know what I did with the list. I'm not good at that so I'm gonna just start keeping it in a like a running email to myself so that when I'm ready to do the next floss tube I can bring it up but one thing I did remember is Peggy, I asked you what your favorite um, side dish was for Thanksgiving, and Peggy said the pumpkin pie. And she said when she and her husband got married, they both said, bar none, their mom's pumpkin pie was the best. So they had to have a pumpkin pie bake-off. They had the bake-off. Turns out their moms used the very same recipe from the, from the can of the canned pumpkin puree. So that was a funny one. But I will do a better job of keeping track of your comments because they're always good. I always learn things in the comments. So I hope you guys read those sometimes too. Anyway, back to the winner. The winner is the Wee Stitcher D for this one. So D, if you will contact me, my email address is in the comments or in the um, box below. And I will get this cute project bag off to you. Okay, the next giveaway, I love this one is a Christmas bag, Christmas cheer, hot cocoa, oh, hot cocoa with a polka dot mug. How cute is that? And she always includes the um, accessory pouch and a couple of skeins of DMC to match. And so let's see, we're gonna use the word joy. Let's use the word joy. In your comment if you'd like to be entered for that beautiful project bag for next time all right now I brought a few things from the shop to share with you so we'll go through those quickly and um, then we'll be done and I will be oh question of the day for next time because sometimes it's nice to have a question to answer in the comments Tell me the last good book you read or listened to. Just for those people who are looking for some winter reading or listening, I like to listen on audiobooks because I like to be stitching while I'm doing it. Um, what is the last good book or just a good book that you'd recommend for winter reading and listening? I lately have been uh, listening to autobiographies. So, um, 
I listen to Amy Poehler's and Tina Fey, um, Michael J. Fox. I just got done with uh, Matthew Perry's book, which is an incredible picture of addiction. Uh, um, it's just amazing. Um, and I just downloaded, this is not an autobiography, but I just downloaded the book Verity by Colleen Hoover because everybody said that was so good. So I don't know if I recommend it or not. I'm going to listen to that hopefully this weekend. So do you have any books that you've listened to or read that you would highly recommend for all of our winter reading? That would be great. All right, now let me just show you a few things from the shop and then we will be done. I pulled a few um, Christmas things. Now we have a ton of Christmas patterns for sale for you guys. And if you go to the home page, right in the middle of the home page, you can click and it says shop, I think it says shop Christmas slash holiday patterns. And that will bring up anything that is tagged with the word Christmas or holiday. So that's a good way to look through some of them. So I brought some of those that I'm going to show you. And then we got these bags in. Now I carried these bags in the yarn shop when I had that because they're adorable. And for me, um, they're also perfect for putting your project bags in if you want to go to a stitch night or if you want to just keep them in one of these bags because they're so cute but they also make great gift wrap you know it's a cute gift bag so we have the, their bungalow 360 bags and we have the tote bag and we have the messenger bag but look how cute these are so they do animals so i thought these cats were adorable you've got like my Ollie cat who's ready to pounce on the mouse. But you've also got the sitting cats with the heart on their body. And it's got um, the heavy duty straps. It's got a zipper top, which I love. And then all the insides are polka dots, different colors of polka dot. It also has a zipper pocket on the inside. So this is the one that I say is fun to put a lot of your project bags in and carry them off to wherever. So I brought a few of those to show you. We have more prints than what I brought because I didn't want to bring half the store. Isn't this one sweet? Little, the little deer. And I always love the brown-blue combination. Um, who is it that used to have, Vera Bradley, used to have a brown and blue paisley pattern combination that I just loved. All right, and then on the inside of this one is polka dots to match. This is one of their new prints, adorable, Bumblebee. Isn't that cute for spring or summer? That might need to be my go-to bag this summer. And it's got green polka dots on the inside. And this is another one that I love, the puffer fish. I've got this bag, so I think he's so cute. And a blue inside. All right, then we have the messenger bags, and these are nice for even, I mean, you can certainly carry projects in there, or even a, like using it like your purse, because it's got a long strap that you can make even longer. And pandas, I love these pandas. Some of these prints I have in both the messenger bag and the tote bag. Got a green inside. It's another one that I have. Yes, I do love these bags. The little otters who hold hands. You know they hold hands so they don't float away from each other when they sleep. And it's got pink polka dot inside. And then the last one I brought is the penguins. I also love penguins. And it's got black inside. And they all have zipper pockets and I keep the plastic because when you order them I put them back in the plastic for you to ship. So that's just a line of bags. I love bags so I will always find fun bags for us to have. And then I brought a few um, patterns home. So first of all Remember we have the little Mill Hill kits, so we have several of these for Christmas. I don't know if you have older um, grandkids in your life. This might be a fun little project for them to do on Christmas Day. 
were leading up to. So there's a few of those. I just brought a couple. Little gingerbread snow globe. And then we have some Santas. And the kit comes with the perforated paper, the beads, and the red floss. And of course the pattern. So those are just kind of fun and I thought, you know, if you have people visiting for the holidays, you might just keep a little basket of them in case somebody wants to pick one up and have some fun things to do. And then we have Lila's Studio has two new Spirit of Christmas patterns out. Let me see if I can get that without the glare. And again, fun as pin pillows for a dough bowl or a shelf. Also fun as ornaments. Set one, set two. And then she came out with these a little bit earlier, and these just crack me up. I mean, they're uh, Christmas sweaters, which are cute as ornaments. Or a whole bowl full of Christmas sweaters would be fun. I think they're very creative. And then I brought just two other designers. And like I said, we have so many Christmas patterns, but um, some of these I thought maybe you haven't seen or haven't paid attention to. So Collection Tra La La has some really cute um, patterns and designs. And so I brought some of those. So I'm not gonna pronounce these. I'm gonna let you read the top. I don't know if you need me to pronounce them. I'm not gonna try. I did take French, but in high school, you know, so it's been a while. I thought this one was so cute. I love the swirly stars above. And of course the little elf. Okay, Lutin de Noel, de Noel, Lutin de Noel, Elf of Christmas, maybe? I don't know, cute though, huh? These strawberries, strawberries of Christmas, Fraces de Noel. Don't tell me I'm doing it wrong. I know I'm doing it wrong. This one has a snowman and a Santa finished into strawberries. Noel de Sorry. I'm not sure what the word sorry means, but there are cute mice in there. Maybe it means mouse. Nui magic, magic, night magic. Mouton de Noel, that's sheep of Christmas. Okay, this is easy. Merry Christmas. I love the Santa on top of the house on that one. Tableton de Hever. Winter, maybe winter tableau. Okay, it's got mushrooms on it, so of course I love that one. I've had that in my stash for probably three years. I just need to make it. I'm not gonna pronounce this one, but it's cute. Okay, I think Soris, Sori might be mouse because this is Sori Noel and it's Mama Mouse with her little one and a Christmas cake. And Dus Nui, something night, huh? And Il est tat un foie Noel. I don't know what that means. Cute pattern. And then I added Shannon Christine patterns to um, the shot because I have had this one for two years and I just think it's stunning. It's not even necessarily my normal um, design kind of what I tend towards, but I just thought this was gorgeous. So this is winter snowfall. And of course you could do your accent in any color, but isn't that gorgeous? I might have first seen this on Stacy 911 Stitchers video a couple years ago. I love that. It's Christmas. You know, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be something actually if I did it, I would keep it out year round no matter what. But 
Um, this one, Falling Snow, is more something that you could probably, if you swap it out, you probably could just do January, February, although the trees have stars on them, but also gorgeous. And I would do these in silk, I'm sure, because, you know, limited number of colors and maybe a hank for the white, I don't know. I love gnomes, so this one I thought would be fun to do. And of course I had to get the hot chocolate ones because you know, I need to do one of these up. Here's the other one to put a sign up in our little hot chocolate bar. So we have more of hers, and I have more that I ordered that I haven't gotten up on the website yet. I'll get that up next week. But those are just a few Christmas patterns to tempt your, uh, tempt your fancy. Okay, that's all from me today. Thank you for sticking in there if you watched all the way to the end. I hope you give this a like and um, leave a comment below so we can chat in the comment section. I will probably be back the week after Christmas, so I just want to tell you all happy holidays and Merry Christmas to you. I hope you have just a blessed time with your family. We're um, looking forward to being together with my mom and brother. You know, it's our first Christmas without my dad, and so, you know, it'll be good to be together, and we're looking forward to that. So I wish you all the best, and I will probably talk to you that last week in December sometime. And we'll talk about plans for 2023. I might do that whip parade because I have a lot of really cool patterns that I've started and I want to do and maybe some plans for, for the next year. So uh, I will talk to you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.